Hey everyone, Jeff Lee here at NAB 2019. I am with Jeremy Young from Atomos. So hey hey thank you, you so much for joining us today. No problem, no problem. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, of course, you got a lot of new excitements. You guys always blow it up with this awesome booth. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to you know, talking about all the new things you're developing. So where do we start? Shogun yeah. 7? What do you think? Yeah, Shogun 7. Yeah. Shogun 7. Um, you know, we have obviously a great platform with uh, the Shogun series up to Inferno. And we're like, you know, we've got to do something different, got to do something different. And a couple of years ago, we realized a edge lit backlight which is what most screens are today except for the top end TVs and what they've been starting to do is not have LEDs along the edge of the screen they've got LEDs behind the screen sure. and a lot of them and then they can turn them on and off right. local, local dimming as they call dimming, it yeah you know dynamic backlight whatever you want to call it um, but the to be able to do that you need to analyze the brightness of the image the the gamma which obviously we know from the cameras log curve and all that kind of stuff so it was like oh well that's pretty easy and then we've got to turn the LEDs on and off sure. in the appropriate um, form for the image. A lot of cool things happened from that. Um, when we started to develop, we, we went past kind of, we tried to jam as many LEDs as we could. 360 of them was what we could get in there, um, which gives you like an 80 by 80 pixel um, range. Mm -hmm. So you, really, you don't get any haloing, it's a really small area. And it, what, it, what it's given us is the ability to kind of shade in a million different gradations, black to white. And, and that has effectively given us, like an artist doing a, a sketch and then shadowing and shading. And you know when they do that, they go, uh, uh, and you're like, wow, that's a cheek. How did they do that? Well, that's what this screen looks like. So you get this kind of depth perception increase because we're able to shade it. I know we had a rose, you know, some of the footage that we were looking at just as the beginning of it, you got a rose on the screen of a Shogun Inferno and it looks great, but then it came out on the new screen. And that's what I think people will really enjoy over the next um, you know, couple of years with, uh, with these new dynamic backlight technologies. So we're the first to bring it. We're really proud of it. We're going to keep pumping that out in all the products into the future. Right, that's great. And obviously, you know, high brightness is relatively easy. Anyone can pump a really bright yeah, LED yeah, yeah. behind the display. But what you guys are doing is really smart, which is contrast range, which is important. We talk about things like HDR, right? That's it's right. more than just high brightness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were in a 1,000 to 1-ish, one contra and maybe 1,200 to 1 contrast range. But that's the maximum number of um, stops you can, actually, um, you can actually map. So what we were doing, backlight on 100%, digitally mapping in to the kind of Rec. 709 space. So people go, oh, is it Rec. 7? No, it's not Rec. 709. We're definitely jamming more in there. But we do still have full brightness only to play with across the image. So I can't pump up the sun and reduce the kind of dusk on the water, you know, dark areas. And the highlights, they'll pop, but not quite as much because the water's black areas aren't shaded. Well, now we, we've got that capability. So you guys are really making this obviously for onset monitoring, yes, but correct. able to accurately look at, like, say, HDR shooting, right? For sure, for sure. So uh, that is really our focus, as you know. The HDR workflows, we we love HDR. We think it's amazing, um, and we can see where it's going, and that's why we love it so much. And we've had to step there with the tech that's available, and then we've invested in the new technology to kind of keep up with the latest and greatest kind of Samsung, LG TVs that are really doing zone backlight really well. And that led us to kind of go, which the next thing I want to talk about is the announcement of Dolby Vision real-time output support over HDMI. So what we do is we take the log or raw, and then we, trans we, we uh, analyze it, we send it to the Dolby algorithm, they come back and, and tell us, because we query the TV, we tell the, their algorithm what the specs are for the TV, sure. and they pop out their, I've done 5,000 movies and graded them for the last 15 years. Uh, perfect curve for that TV, and it just looks fantastic. And we're showing that over in the, in the dark room over in the um, Dolby section. So Dolby Vision, of course, relies on scene-dependent uh, yes, sort of metadata, correct. and that's something that the Shogun 7 can also support? Correct, and, and Ninja 5 okay. as well. And Ninja 5. Yeah, so both of them have it. Um, probably should be able to put it on the Sumo. We, we haven't tried that yet, just getting the Shogun 7 finished. Um, so watch this space. We'll definitely put on as many things as we can. It, it's not super tough uh, in terms of processing power, but we do push our products to the limit all the time so you just never know when you're going to run it you know you get you get your iphone and and you go ah oh, i haven't got that function because you kind of run out of hardware juice um but shogun 7 and ninja 5 definitely support it and that's pretty innovative and that's kind of great too that you guys are pushing that and the first to market with something along those lines and they're a great company you know dolby we haven't really worked that closely with them before but yeah it's been an amazing experience we've learned a lot 
sure. um, and I think they've learned a lot as well on the you know kind of in the field use of it. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about that about that announcement. And obviously, you guys announced a bunch of other things as well. So there's the uh, modules for you know the various uh, SDI module, NDI module you did last year. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, yeah. So we've um, we put SDI ahead of some of the others just because it was such an overwhelming request. Albeit we had just as many requests for NDI and sync, it, we already have a lot of SDI capability. So the NDI stuff we slowed down slightly to get the SDI one out first, but you'll see it really soon. I know it's like six months since we announced it at IBC, so people have been waiting. However, it is coming, um, and we're really excited to unlock those new workflows. Ninja gets SDI, Ninja gets NDI, Ninja gets timecode synchronization on set, um, and we're just kind of evolving that ecosystem. And then on the other side of it, we've got like a great monitoring technology and a lot of people requesting you know, oh, I want to stay in the Atomos because I don't want to go to another monitor-only company. Um, and I'm like, well, I like that idea. <laughs> so why don't we make a monitor-only line? And we started that with our Shinobi series. Um, we announced Shinobi SDI here, which is obviously more broadcast. You know, HD SDI only, but that's what most broadcasters and kind of those infrastructures are using. Um, and then it also accepts 4K input. And, and the HDMI version um, is a 399 version, SDI 499 pretty affordable to get really high quality, high bright and HDR monitoring. Yeah, we love the HDMI version. We saw it uh, when you announced it, I guess, last, was it last year or a couple of months ago? Yeah, a couple but, of months ago. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the SDI one's always really exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's kind of perfect pairing, like I said, onset monitor, you, the uh, quad view, by the way, scopes you mode like is it? amazing. I love that feature, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we did it, it was like, wow, this is cool. And so it's a, yeah, it's a, the, we call it the analysis mode and you can flick through the, you know, waveform, you can move histogram under, you can move waveform under the image, and then you've got a couple of white balance and um, you know vector scopes and stuff to check. And you can have all three at the same time. Yeah. And I didn't realize the kind of differences between histogram, waveform, luma parade, and I mean, obviously vector scope's different, but it was very interesting to see them interact together. I really understand what they are now. Even though I've read it and you know we've been implementing them a long time, but to see them w work all together, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, honestly, it's one of our favorite things. We love using the screen on the camera as your framing and reference guide, and yeah. then using the Shinobi as your for, analysis for, mode. Perfect. Yeah, so perfect. perfect. That, that's what we built it for. Yeah. So you're exactly. using it properly. Yeah, as exactly usual, you guys always use it properly. <laughs> we try. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, what else? Do you have anything else exciting? Anything you kind of uh, uh, what else? talk what else? about? Oh, the switching on the Shogun 7 and the yes, Sumo. Right. So it's kind of a, a, a slightly separate category. It's the monitor recorder switcher. Mm -hmm. All touchscreen, very simple. It's not, it's not to go into infrastructure that's been in there for 30 years. It's for the new crowd coming going, you know what, I want two cameras, I want three cameras, right? And when you think about it, you can put a Shinobi for 400 bucks, run the SDI into a Shogun 7 or a Sumo. You can do four inputs. You can switch, you queue it. I want to go here, switch across. You can say how long you want those transitions to be. An XML goes with it into editing and they're all synced. It's asynchronous, so you can go from HDMI into the Shinobi and run SDI, and we will accept all signals and match them frame synced. So it's really cool. It took, it took us a bit longer than we expected, and I kind of have a bit more respect for the switching companies now. And the engineers are like, this is not that easy, Jeremy. <laughs> but, but to their credit, they came up with a great solution, and it's really, really reliable, bulletproof kind of um, synchronization and now you can do you know a two three four camera shoot and we and whatever switching you're doing we record the program stream at the same time so we can do four HD 60p signals plus a HD 60p switched right. program so you feed. Have the ISOs plus the switch Correct. line cut and you can output that switched feed or choose one of the ISOs okay. as the output depending on what you want to do because right. um, a lot of people might have a locked off shot that they do want running all the time uh, and the different camera angles so it's pretty cool seeing what people do with it. I mean, I'm not a production expert, you know, but when we go out and see these people, it's like, well, actually, we could just kind of bypass half that kit right. and just kind of condense it down into one. Yeah, I imagine for a lot of productions, you don't need a full console, you don't need all that, right? You just have literally a but sumo. There's not much choice outside of that today, right? And, and you know, you've got companies racing to the bottom on that, and then 
people are like, but it's pretty, still pretty complicated. You know, you, you can't race to the bottom on price and keep things at, you know, a million dollar workflow understanding of technical information. You've got to dumb that down to something that people, creatives can really use. And that's what we think we've done quite well in the Shogun 7 and the Sumo. Yeah, that's exciting. So always a pleasure to see what you guys are cooking up. Every year you guys have something up your sleeves and it's exciting. Awesome. So we appreciate that so much. Thanks, so Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, again, this is NAB 2019 at the Atomos booth. Uh, this is it for now. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.